Hey everybody, I'm Amina Dell, aka Green Grow Guy, and I want to thank you for watching video two of propagating our rose bush. Okay, so some of the things that you're going to need for phase two is this tray, the actual fiber cubes that we're going to talk about in a minute, and the Clonex, along with the shear still. All right, because we're going to also learn a process and propagation called wounding. All right. So starting with the fiber cubes, what you're going to do is you're going to take your shears and cut these out as individual two, uh, cubes. Um, you can be barbaric and try to rip it with your hands, um, but I will guarantee you because they're so dry, as you can see, they're very, very dry. Um, you may rip them and then you're going to wind up having waste. So I just suggest cutting them right out in the cubes. They're already kind of perforated, cut it, just cut it out more. Um, with the tubes so that you can use all your cubes and not waste any. Alright, what you're going to do is then take those cubes and set them in your black tray. Once you set them in your black tray, you're going to pour water into the black tray and allow the fiber cubes to absorb the water. Once you have seen that the cubes have reached their maximum absorption, you're going to drain off the excess water. Okay? Because you don't want to oversaturate it, because if you oversaturate it, you'll begin to create things like mold. Um, and you'll begin to understand as we go further along in this video exactly how and why. All right. So without you guys, as you see, I already have one of the stems that we propagated off the rose bush sitting inside of the fiber cube inside of the tray. This is the goal. And this is what you're going to want to do. How do we get to this point? Now I'm about to show you. So first, next thing, after the fiber cubes, you're going to want to take your clone gel. And you're going to want to pour your clone gel in an individual container. A little bit. You don't need to fill it up to the top. Um, and the reason why is because once you use this, you have to clean this out and you can't pour it back into the bottle. Um, because it defeats the purpose of what I'm about to tell you. Plants can carry different kind of funguses and bacteria that you're unaware of. Um, and you definitely do not want to transfer that to anything new that you're propagating. Okay? Even though I know my rose bush is in excellent condition, I don't want to take any chances with transferring any, any fungus or any bacteria that might have got on this rose bush that I cannot see at this time into my actual clone mix because then I will be transferring it to everything that I propagate from that point forth. So you're always going to have an individual cup here, okay, um, to do this propagation process. So the very next thing I did after I poured my clone gel into um, my the, the individual cup I got my shears, I got my stem, and we're going to begin a process called wounding, okay? And what that is, is when we go to the bottom, we're going to go to the bottom of the stem where we cut, we're going to cut it on an angle, keep the chart, I'm going to try to keep this in the camera as much as I can for you guys. We're going to cut it on an angle, alright, because that stimulates rapid root growth. Okay, when you're propagating. Then we're going to begin, finish the wounding process by scraping the actual outer layer of the stem. Okay, I'm going to show you guys what it should look like. We're just going to scrape the initial skin off. Okay, we're not carving, you know, we're not making a wood carving so we don't have to go crazy. But the reason why we're doing this, guys, is because everywhere we skin right now, and cover with the clone gel is where roots are going to pop out. The more roots that pop out, the better chances of this propagation surviving. So we're going to get off the little excess skin. And I'm going to show you guys. You see how that tip is lighter than all the rest of it? We just scraped off the initial covering. Then we're going to take our clone gel and we are going to cover everything that we just wounded. We're going to cover it completely. And it's going to look like that. 
then we're going to just stick it in side of this fiber and voila there you have it so once we do this we're going to want to have it in a fairly humid place um, a lot of times if it's smaller things you can put a dome on top of it um, in this instance I actually board it inside to my indoor greenhouse because I have the humidity um, in here just right Initially, for the first few days, I advise you to keep this in a darker setting. Um, so what actually happens is, yes, I have the light on now to show you guys what to do. Um, but when I walk out, I turn the lights out and I allow the things that need to be propagated to be propagated um, and generate a nice root system. Um, it's about 72 degrees in here. Um, my humidity is approximately at between 57 and 60 percent. OK. So it is fairly humid in here and the temperature is perfect. All right. So without boring you guys, I am going to finish propagating all of our rose, our future rose bushes. All right. And for those that were curious, how many rose bushes did I get off of that one bush? Nine. So we're going to grow nine successful new rose bushes. Um, and the initial bush that we bought that my wife purchased, I think she paid $18.99 for it. So you do about 20 times nine, and this is the amount of money that you just saved. Um, and you are going to propagate and have beautiful rose bushes. Um, the last thing that I want to tell you guys is that this isn't something that you do in days process. Once you trim this, know that the life is leaving these stems. So it's very imperative that you get them planted as soon as possible. I wanna thank everybody for watching and I will definitely have a part three to show you guys the root system and the progress as it grows. See you next time.